Okay, so today I really wanted to look at how to, this edge work here is really problematic. There's almost no edge work. It looks like almost you're seeing the person through a, like a very see-through film or, you know, those shower walls, those shower, like those slidey, slider walls for the shower, um, slidey doors, um, how they can be a little translucent. It looks like we're seeing him through like some sort of film. And though this is not 14 day challenge format, um, you're drawing a very specific kind of face, almost like you're working with a reference very, very closely, your day one, day two, day three, all the way to day six are ex ex very, very similar to each other. So this is not appropriate format. If you guys don't know how to do the format, ask someone and they'll direct you to my community tab on my website where I talk about um, the basic rules. But essentially what you're supposed to be learning how to draw is a non-organic face. Something very universal, constructed through your tastes, of course, but this is not something, this face here is perfect, but it seems very, very closely made with a reference. And not every character you're going to design for a blank production company is going to look like this. So you have to find and master in those 14 days the face that does look like this, um, that can be manipulated. So the basic face, like let's, let's think about one specific game, like um, Handsome Jack from uh, from from Borderlands 2 okay so handsome Jack I spelled that wrong okay so he is pretty handsome he's a handsome fella okay very very basic face and it's exactly what they needed to serve the purpose of the game now let's look up Gaston <clears throat> okay extremely extremely similar face very very similar bone structure um, let's look up one more handsome guy from another movie. Uh, la, 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 la. Some like not car not movie like a cartoon. Um, what's something recent I've seen that's cartoony? Uh, shit. Why am I like it's so weird? Like every time I want to come up with something, I can't. Um, like another handsome dude. Okay, like the realistic version of the beast. Oh, okay, so human beast, Beauty and the Beast. Okay. Again, same exact face. And there's a reason why I'm saying you guys got to memorize this face. Of course, these this face has variations to it. But it's served a plethora of production, it's, it's, it, of, of storytelling. That's the point of your 14-day challenge. You're perfecting this specific kind of face over 14 days, learning how to render it with the utmost skill you're capable of and smacking it into your portfolio so you can get hired for the next super sexy evil antagonist of, of a game or, or protagonist of, of, a, of a movie or something like that. The 14-day challenge is basic stem. It's the necklace. The, the, the thread of the necklace is that it's made for... To be hireable, made for production, made for fast, faster production time, and you being able to have a face that you go to every time. You should do a 14-day challenge for a male and female, and you should try your best to memorize all the basic beauty standards you can in the 14-day challenge. It is not 14 days of copying the same reference over and over and over again. That said, I'm going to critique this like it's any other face study. I'm going to talk about how to transfer, how to bring in edge work and make it look like we are seeing him uh, clear as day. We're not seeing him through any film. And what we got to do is find all the basic core geometry behind all these smudgy edges. Too much smudgy edges. Too many. All right, what we need to do is unsmudge them. So what I'm doing with a basic blocking brush, the brush I'm using is my basic brush from the store. And what I'm doing here is I am blocking in using planes. I'm finding the planes and I'm blocking in. And the planes are found by identifying the geometric anatomy under all of these features. So for the nose, I did a nose video on that and I tell you exactly the kind of shape. I tell you the exact kind of shape you should memorize if you want to be able to draw every nose that ever existed. The best shape that summarizes the basic genetics or the genetic code that, that um, unites all noses of the world. All right, and this is what I'm doing. I'm identifying where these areas are. Okay, so thinking about geometric anatomy, the core plane, so the temple line here needs to be. 
set up. It's so weird. It's like I don't know any of you anymore. It's so weird when you take a break for so long. It's like I've just only just started streaming for the first time in my life. It's such a out of body experience <laughs> taking like a break. It's it's a I hate I hate downtime whenever I've had surgery, whenever I've had like anything like that. The the downtime required and the recovery time is just the fucking worst. I despise it. I hate being like inert. I, I despise it. I, it kills me. Okay, so again, same thing here. Finding that the the planes that separate everything, and once you're done with the molar brush strokes, the large ones, the sweeping ones, you go down and identify where are the rest of these miniature, micro, little versions of those planes are. Sorry, I'm not looking at the comment section just yet. Um, I think Jeremy, hey Jeremy, thanks for coming today. I think Jeremy, um, if you see anyone talking outside of the topic after I just warned, uh, feel free to give them a timeout. It could be anything. It could be talking about about the new Nintendo console or it could be talking about how how much of a disappointment Zero Dawn is. <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn. It could be any of that. <laughs> Go ahead and <laughs> Go ahead and, uh, and ban them. Not ban, timeout. I probably just probably brought up a new discussion topic. But... Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm separating by edges the pupil from the whites of the eyes. Okay, and this is basically how we make him a little bit more visible from his surroundings. We find these edges, and this is edge work. This is rendering. Okay. So please don't speak outside of the topic. If you do here on out, Jeremy will time you out. So stop talking unless it's to answer some question regarding what I'm discussing or to clarify something I may not have said or said or whatever. Okay, and I'm just closing off this lash line. I don't want it to be too thick because that'll read as feminine. And I could not have zoomed in and, uh, and approached this level of detail without doing the micro, uh, the, the molar brush strokes that I made early on. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back out and see if this is making any sense. I've got to tie off that inner corner right along here. This is a cast shadow, so it's stretching in from this area. Got a little bit of value sharing around the eyes. The eyebrows are just a little bit confusing to me. I don't know where they start or where they end. But just this, just doing this kind of edge work has moved us from this level, where we're seeing him from a through a film, to here we're seeing him just a little bit clearer. I'm going to try to push this level of detail everywhere. Edges can come in two forms: as a fold right angle or any kind of angle just as long as it's sharp enough or one object in front of the other and one of the most important edges around the nose is the nostril in front of the cavity of the nostril then we've got his laugh lines I'm gonna give them just a little bit more shape and I'm gonna talk a little bit about I wanted to make a separate video to make up for my absence on Tuesday but I don't think I have time I wanted to talk about the differences between like the, the, the superiority of using the smudge tool over using the eyedropper tool. Um, the smudge tool on a scatter brush, and I, I will be releasing a brush set that I made very soon just for the scatter, just for the smudging, and I'll, I'll, I'll make the video re um, like related to that as well, so don't fret if you don't know how to use it. But, um, but the reason why it's better, and this is just a little preview of what the video will, will contain, um, is it is a very it's re the, the core reason is that you're reorganizing the paint that's already been used the smudge tool doesn't bring in any new paint do not use the mixer brush just use the smudge tool the smudge tool is the most probably one of the most powerful tools in photoshop and used with the right brush and the right scatter and the right pen pressure it behaves very very similarly to re the real world in the real world you don't have to tradi traditional you don't have 
uh, eyedropper tool. You don't have anything that will drop the color you just used and automatically transfer it to your palette um, on your plate and then you can just uh, dab your brush in it and start painting just like we do in Photoshop. No, the most realistic version of how we blend traditionally in digital is the smudge tool. Start getting acquainted with the smudge tool. If you don't know how to use it, you probably don't know how to prep blend traditionally either. Um, you need to spend some time with a good pencil and a sketchbook and just start blending shades together. Try some form studies on a basic brush, um, on, on, on a, sorry, on a basic sketchbook on a paper. And um, uh, use your pencil, use a smudge tool, use your fingertips to smudge it, but get acquainted with how much more beneficial it is to reorganize the paint you've already used instead of bringing in new paint. The mixer tool brings in new paint. All right, it brings in new colors. So let's say I had this color on and I'm using the mixer tool. It's bringing in the new color. It's mixing, but it's bringing in this fucking color I don't want to use. What I want, what I want you to get to know how to do is use your brush tool. And number one, the brush gives off a texture that is really useful. It's very believable. And you can add or subtract from that texture as much as you want. And it is the exact equivalent of how these colors will blend. Not exact, but very close to how it works with pencils and smudging stuff um, with dry brush technique and oils or acrylics and then Conte and charcoal. So please get yourself acquainted with this. What's wrong with the mixer brush? The mixer brush brings in paint. When you tell a student, when I'm teaching, from my own per professional perspective as a teacher, I get, tell the student, okay, uh, use the mixer brush. What they will do is bring in contrast. When I tell them, you don't have to, you just blend with the eyedropper tool, eyedropper or mixer brush, they're dangerous for a student's development. I imagine you're all here because you are students, you're not professionals yet. So for me to give the green light and say, okay, use the eyedropper or the mixer brush. I'm basically telling you, you're allowed to bring in more contrast. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying you're allowed to bring in, you have the opportunity and I have green lighted the opportunity for you to do this, for you to, 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 to blend away and bring in a color that you don't need, a value that you don't need, instead of reorganizing and pushing and moving around the paint that you've already thrown in here. The reason why that's so important to preserve is because these brush strokes you made early on should have addressed how much contrast you'll need. And I'm not talking about dark spot contrast, I'm talking about the general shape of the face. So the smudge tool is very, very important for you to use. It's, I don't know who's the jackass out there, please let me know them, tell me where they live so I can find them and kick their ass. This asshole that's been going around telling people smudging is cheating. Um, I just want to hold them and ask them. I'm sorry, a lot of swearing is coming up, you dumb fuck. How were you smudging? How were you blending when you were painting traditionally? Exactly what made you think it was okay to spread around this ugly rumor? It's uh, this, 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 this stigma. It's, there's, please smudge as much as you fucking can. It's, it's, it's not ideal for you to, pe to depend on a digital crutch such as the eyedropper tool. There's nothing like this in the world. Nothing in the outside of my Photoshop. Nothing can do this in the real world compared to the smudge tool, which there is many, many different ways to duplicate this exact method. Okay, you can try by throwing in a wet wash over the canvas before you start applying paint. It makes the smudging more easy. You can use a wet brush or a dry brush to reorganize the paint. Also smudging technique. Um, you can uh, use uh, some color in the paint brush as you're painting or the smudge tool if you're using pencils. does have just a little bit of lead left in it for you to smudge and draw with. It is an amazing tool. Please get acquainted with it. If you don't have a scatter brush, that is good. You cannot, the only, the only rub, the only um, uh, condition is that your smudge tool, the, the, the brush that you use on the smudge tool has to be a scatter brush, okay? You have to use a scatter brush, meaning that the scatter option has to be turned off and turned on in your brush settings. Okay, so uh, if you don't have one, I'll be releasing my set soon enough along with the set, the brushes that were with the books that I've recently discontinued. And um, you'll be able to have that if you don't have a brush um, of your own to use. But this combined with some edge work and my smudge tool are the two ways I've managed to render this face. I've brought this face outside of this, that, that smudgy perspective and 
I'm introducing now the darkest values. After setting up a really good plate, I'm starting to introduce these values. But yeah, where is that dumb fuck that spread around this, uh, this, this rumor? And um, show me where he lives. <laughs> Give me a name. I just need a name and I'm just going to call my, my bro John Wick and we're just going to go ahead and find where he lives and kick his ass. I think we'll just beat him up with some canvases. <laughs> that would be really, really funny. And you can control the strength on this. So if you're not doing it right, if it's not working for you, it doesn't mean you're doing it right. It, if it's not working for you, you do have a scatter brush and it's not reading. You're doing something wrong. You don't forfeit just so early and don't throw it off as a problem with the smudging technique. No, the problem is with you. You haven't yet discovered that the proper combination of your hand weight, everyone's hand weight is different as they paint, um, and the, the, the strength and your pen pressure and your kind of tablet, and it's just give it some time. I promise you, you'll thank me. The smudge tool is an amazing, powerful tool. And if you're lucky enough to have a good system, good computer, um, then you'll be able to benefit from it even more. It works. It needs a, a bit of RAM to run um, if you're using it on a large scale. And if you're painting with like large canvases, you probably um, you're probably uh, you know if you can open a large canvas and use a large brush, you probably can use the smudge tool. So what I'm doing now is again more micro detail using contrast. And I'm really not sure if this was a photograph before you started working on. I don't know exactly what you went through to get this face. It's very realistic and human, um, and it's like I've seen this face before. But at the same time, it's too specific a kind of face for it to be a 14-day challenge format. If you're not interested in using your skill set to be hired or to do commissions or to freelance or whatever, um, if you're not interested in any of that, I guess you don't have to worry about learning the universal beauty standard. But I'm just letting you know every other woman you're going to draw, every other man you're going to draw is going to be based off this 14-day challenge face. If you're okay with that, which is cool, everyone's everyone's style is different, everyone's journey is different, sorry, um, then go ahead and continue with this face. But I recommend you restart, discover your own personal view of a female beauty or male beauty. Um, usually it's very universal um, and uniquely universal. Like you have your own take on it, meaning. <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, and then post it again. So I'm creating some edge distinction between the nostril and the upper cheek area. But I'll answer some questions in a second uh, regarding anything I've discussed already. So please don't ask random questions like what my favorite color is or something like that. And when you smudge, it really feels like you're manipulating the paint intimately. You don't feel like at any moment in time you're bringing more paint and destroying it. And if in your painting, if you're traditionally painting and you haven't blocked in and you're blending as you block in, that's like the worst thing you can do because you're doing a preliminary sketch while attempting to render. That's really wrong. You can't block in and render at the same time. You either blocked in, addressed the geometries and took care of all the preliminary brush strokes, zoomed out, and then you zoomed in and considered which areas stay edgy and which areas get blended out. You can't do both at the same time, or, or you just try to do them both at the same time and you just confuse stuff, meaning that you're blocking in and you're trying to render. So you've just blocked in the eye, you go in and you keep blocking until you hit one pixel width in your brush. That's a mistake. Some light will be built radially at the top of this. This is exactly how I paint with my brushes. This is exactly how I paint with my sketchbook and my pencils. This is my technique. I either erase or use my kneading eraser, of course, if you want to erase with pencils, you got to erase. Or if I'm using gouache or some kind of white pencil, I'll just build it up. Get my smudger tool. They're very specific, tiny little tools. It's like They look like a, a joint. <laughs> Um, where is it? Smudger tool. Tiny little rolls. Um, pencils. Sorry, I haven't been able to type very well. These muscle relaxants are crazy. But this thing, I have one for the whites and one for the darks, and I just smudge. Every new line that I paint doesn't just get thrown in raw. No line is that important. No, no stroke is that important. Everything goes under the brush. 
Um, everything gets reassessed and blended together or else it'll look like you're painting some kind of non-human cut and paste uh, collage type of nothing seems to be sewn in together and the smudge tool does that for you so I am telling you guys to smudge where necessary I'm not telling you to smudge away your geometries I, I my mantra is the cube so always and forever the cube comes before anything else and that's why we block in that's why the blocking in stage comes first and then now that we're really late into the painting process, what I would do is I'm, I've, I've thrown no fine detail at all is available. I'm not painting in every little hairline, and I've delayed contrast as much as possible. I put edge work ahead of everything, and I'm just blocking in. So I'm going to ask some questions. Feel free to write my name. Um, at Istabrak so I can see the question or else it'll just get flooded away in the chat. But um, Jeremy, right at the end, remind me to ask everyone what should be the, like the little ideas for the next poll for the, for the next challenge. So I do want to ask you guys, I do have a list of the last uh, recommendations you guys did, but the one that we just did, Floral Humanoid, someone recommended that, someone suggested that at the end of one of our sessions, so that's nice. You guys had some great ideas. I will bring back some of the ones that lost, like, um, that lost the vote, or like one second, uh, like uh, the uh, the pets, the familiar, or animal companion based off a of planet. So like, uh, combining like the surface texture of a planet and throwing it on an animal, and it's supposed to be magical and shit. That's really cool. Okay. So I'm going to darken the eyes just a little bit more. They are under a cast shadow. So I, one thing, one uh, thing that I do have that I know I have a crutch, a digital crutch, is my dependency on the lasso tool. That's definitely something that we just don't have an equivalent for. Unless you're using a paper and you're like edge blending along a paper to get a perfect line. Like you get a separate paper and you're blending along it and you just have this perfect line. Uh, sometimes I do that. It's very similar to getting a lasso tool. Like if I'm trying to erase, I get a piece of paper and I'm blending and I lift up the paper and all I have left is this really well blended edge. That's something I do in traditional. A lot of people have been asking for a traditional video, so I, 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 do, I do plan on doing that. Areas that need blending a lot are lash lines. Lash lines, you can't draw every single lash. Eyebrows as well, you can't draw every single hair. What you have to do is create the illusion of texture. And this beautiful delaying of the contrast will make areas that do use contrast that much more important. Will make it pop and we'll really get that exact feeling of a cavity when we want to use any radial shading along the nose. <clears throat> um, the holes of the nose are a little small, but I, don't know, I just feel like they should be enlarged a little bit. They're a little tiny especially for a male nose. Okay, so let's look at the questions real quick. Isterbrack, I hear you mention value sharing a lot. What exactly is value sharing? That's a very big question. Um, I, I believe I do have a video on it. Uh, if you search it up in my search history, just write value or sharing. Um, isn't that John Belushi? I really don't know who that is. Um, there are some suggestions for themes in the Discord challenge chat. Okay, I'll take a look at that. <clears throat> so, too, so no questions? Uh, Mr. Brat, can I achieve this process with a number two pencil? Um, I, I believe so. I mean, it depends on the kind of, I don't know what, high polymer, I think what that's what it's called. I really don't know what it's called. Um, I just buy the, I forget what the freaking brand is for my pencils. They're really, really basic brand. I get them from the paper factory. Um, and I... I don't know what their design is. I don't know what the what what the exact what what is exactly in the lead. I also have a lead pencil that pe pencil that whose lead is high polymer that has lead that's high polymer, but it's so blendable it's almost creamy. So you just have to find the ones that are blendable. It really doesn't matter if you're using an 8B 
or 2H or whatever it's called. It As long as you have a really blendable material that won't break on you, that won't uh, it's not too brittle, that's more creamy than it is um, dry, it'll be extremely blendable and very, very nice. The reason why I don't recommend going all the way down to like a, a, a 4B or something is because it's too much paint but too soon and pencil is very difficult to erase. Uh, so you might have that problem later on. But I, I really don't know um, exactly what's in that, uh, like the ingredients used, what the chemical composition and why it's so blendable and what the name is it for what it, the name is for it exactly but I know it's referred to as high polymer the one that I'm using and that's usually the one that I look for I think that means blendable I really don't know I'm not an expert with uh, with pencils or pen pencil marketing I guess I'm not an expert with them so you can see what I mean with the largeness of the nostrils um, they just feel a little bit more open now I'm just going to go in and make some more edge work happen. And lead pencils are great. The reason why lead pencils are great is because I can tilt them on the side and I get this nice, really super blendable softness. And then when I want a really, really sharp edge, I just tilt it back up. You can do that with a normal pencil, but the reason why lead pencils were always my favorite is because I, I grew up with them and I, uh, I, I get to choose basically um, like how much I want to... I guess uh, blend 0.5 and 0.7, you get like a different kind of uh, delicacy, I guess, with the amount of pencil you're using, the amount of uh, lead you're applying to the paper. It doesn't feel like I'm giving too much paint, but at the same time, it can get very, very dark using like a, uh, like a, like a 0.5 lead high polymer on, a, on like a basic sketchbook, if I really wanted a lot of paint, I can get a lot out of that pencil. Whereas in a in pencils, they come pretty, like they, they come pretty limited to their to their to their lead weight. So if I wanted to use like a 2B basic standard, I, I would have to be limited to that level of darkness. Whereas lead pencils, I seem to get more paint the harder I press, and it's very layerable. I'm not sure why. It should be pretty much the same. But I've always loved using it. And it's cleaner. Your hands don't get as dirty. You have the mechanical, uh, like the pencil part. The, the, I don't know what to call it. The host of the lead. Uh, all cushioned and nice. Alright, so I'm just throwing in some more edges right along here. And some light up here. So is this a celebrity dude? Is it? Is it someone? Compared to the eyes, uh, for say, how big should the nostrils be? Because to me, they look really big. They begin to look really big. Um, it, uh, nostrils or nostril cavity? Basically, the nostril thickness shouldn't be that thick. It shouldn't be like a huge, uh, like a nostril thickness. Um, it shouldn't look like the nostril is made of like dough. And the, the cavity size is depending on the nostril size itself, and that depends on the nose size. And if you're drawing an ogre, which this is, this is an ogre. We would call this an ogre in my class. It's not an elf. It's the exact opposite. The triangle looks less like this and more like this, starting from the, from the eyes here. Whereas a female's, the eyes would be, and the pupils, and then the nose, and the tiny little mouth, and you get that. His mouth size is very, very wide. But very human still, still believable. This one person in the comment section of one of my videos on YouTube thought I was insulting by referring to it as an ogre. And I I, I don't know where their comment went, went. I didn't get a chance to explain to them that's terminology in my class. I'm not insulting when I'm saying ogre. I'm referring to a really specific um, like beauty standard or non or the opposition of the beauty standard. Okay, so one last little bit. I'm just going to throw some light on the eye here. I really like the 14-day challenge, and I might want to do a presentation regarding to that in my company and promoting you the challenge and how important feedback is. Any objections? That's a bit of a pitch. You might want to contact me on Facebook for that kind of idea. I really don't know how involved I'd have to be for you to execute that presentation, so it's a bit of an extensive question for class. <clears throat> I'm 
Teach me how to paint like you. I pay you one billion dollar. <laughs> but I'm already giving you exactly how to paint like me, and it's for free on my channel. I haven't charged a cent for those videos. All right, bringing in last minute shine. The eyes are usually a little bit shinier, so they have more contrast. And I'm going to throw one more little amount of shadow on top of the eye just to show. All right, one moment, please. The smudge pencil is called tortillan. You mean the little joints? <laughs> yeah. yeah, remember to stay on topic. Jeremy's really, really, really kind. He's he's not as mean as me, so But I will I will if I see anyone talking about games and shit. O outside of the class topic. I mean I did refer to some game game dudes. Okay. So if you wanted to color the eyes in a little bit more, you can. What I'm going to do is just darken just a touch more and try to find a cast shadow. So I'm going to throw in a cast shadow real quick. Right off of this, it's going to be a nice little cast shadow that I'm going to sharpen. So we're trying not to make it seem like we're seeing him through a film. This cast shadow right here. And if you wanted to, now we can think about fine detail. So when it comes to the eyebrows, if they're a little bit dark, we start introducing large to small brush strokes following the hair growth pattern of the eyebrows. I'm just going to look a little bit mystical and mysterious now. Gonna make them a little asymmetrical like that. Kind of inquisitive. Introduce one level of dark shadow around the eye. I'm going to blend that away in a second. So who here has been using the smudge tool um, in their work? Who has been? Just going to introduce some more highlights up here more highlights around. he's got a pretty good nose this guy and the highest point of the nose is a little bit of a shine to it and then moving from the eyebrows giving the eyebrows some shadows you have you have I'm a smudger since I saw your videos good good very good. Um, Isterak, can I still post a flower humanoid even if it's late? Of course, but the only reason why I say, you know, there's a late due date is because I don't get to look at them if you post them late. But yeah, if you wanted your peers to have a look at them. I did open this flower, um, like download this one here, but I don't think I'll be able to look at it. But yeah, absolutely. And I have on my website posted all of the previous challenges and information on the grant winners. Okay, I'm just on the community tab, so go there to get your, uh, to download the resources and um, start your challenges that you've missed. If you would like to, they're all, they're all tailored to fit your portfolio if you wanted to get into freelancing. They all have a very, very wide variety between character design and creature design and environment design. So I'm just trying to figure out the crease of his brow. I need to zoom out all the way to catch some areas I haven't seen. His eyes are a little big, but that's just how he's built. So please don't do this if you are going for a 14-day challenge that you want to use as portfolio material for getting hired for character design. Make sure you're learning how to paint the standard beauty 
and adjust it to your tastes. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's it's basically it doesn't have to be a Barbie doll. What I mean is, but it 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 just can't be um, organic. And by organic, I mean looking like one of us. It has to be that superior um, Olympic level beauty, so that you can get hired to draw Olympic level beauty characters. And if you had to draw an ogre, if you had to draw an ogre type of mercenary with a super gun and he's supposed to be some really ugly but mean and weathered army general and he looks like shit um then then by all means break his nose give him half an eye uh, make his nostrils humongous just think ogre think think orc yep all right so I'm looking again at the comment section in a second if you have any more questions. That was your chance. And the cast shadow here, I did a nose video explaining why this cast shadow, not cast shadow, this core shadow here is so important. This is the, the geometric, the, 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 the remnant of the geometric anatomy of the nose. Very, very important native shadow to have. And then the secondary light source will be on the nose, bouncing up from the lip, I mean from the upper lip. Giving the nose that much more strength and form. He's strong like bull. Okay, and then I'm just going to look at the lips real quick. The lips are something that I always ignore. And the reason why is because very, very easily we can over-render them or treat them as some sort of dense object where, where really lips are the most non-dense, mushy things on the face. <clears throat> I can't draw a head from my mind. They're all blurry. I can only use references. Should I give up on life? Absolutely not, Ben, ben Sanchez. Um, if you can't draw a head from your mind, it means you haven't really had created or developed a diverse visual library and a, di and a diverse vocabulary on the different facets of the head, like the different areas and what they mean geometric anatomy wise, edge work wise, blending wise, beauty wise. It just means you got to just draw more. That's all that it means, Ben. Um, you don't, only if you have like some serious med medical memory problem or if you have like part of your brain missing and you can't for some reason memorize, that's the only way you can't, you know, you got to probably give up on trying to memorize faces. Everyone can memorize a face. Anyone can memorize a face. You just have to remember uh, what kind of learning style do you have? I made a video on how to study and basically I ask you, how do you learn? Are you a visual thinker? Are you a linear thinker? Are you a, do you think in numbers and lists? Um, do you think in layers? Uh, there's so many different ways of learning. So how do you think? How do you remember stuff? If you're a visual thinker, then draw some diagrams. Actually draw a face. Say the face and the eyes should be this much distance from the ears. The ears and the, the eyebrows are this much distance from each other. Using the eyebrow uh, uh, arc, I can find the temple line. That temple line leads to the side views, uh, the side view of the rest of the two outer quarters of the face. Um, the nose has this kind of geometric anatomy. Your problem is the universal problem everyone is having troubles with, Ben. Um, it's that, you know, I can't memorize a face and draw it without too much help. That's what we challenge ourselves in doing when we do the 14-day challenge. We're learning how to paint the same face over and over until we've perfected all the geometric and anatomical and mechanical and, and, and all of the functional aspects of, of a face, um, from skeletal to muscular to, to the skin on top to dermal. Um, so it's not a major issue. No, don't give up on your art. Please don't. Um, and uh, just give it some time. Sometimes it's a mileage thing. Sometimes it's just you're not studying in the way you're supposed to. You're not thinking, you're not studying like um, in your learning style. You're studying in someone else's learning style and it's not clicking. Find the style that's best for you. As a teacher, I always have to identify how does this student learn? Uh, what's the best way to teach them? Do they respond better to diagrams? Do they respond better to lists? Some need lists, some need diagrams. It's just better to find out which one you are and start from there. And uh, watching critiques, watching before and afters, that could be one amazing learning tool for you. I know a lot of students respond to that. Everyone asks for the before and after. Um, no one's really been rejecting them. 
Uh, they love seeing that they're all visual thinkers, I think, in that some way or another, and they all want to see the impact. They want to see how all of that has, what's the end goal of all of these changes. And you'll see in a second, I'll do a before and after. So you have to identify which one you are and then work from there. <clears throat> um, uh, shouldn't his forehead be lighter than the spots, light spots on his chin because it is closer to the light source? Uh, yeah, definitely. There is a large cast shadow moving from his nose to his chin, um, but his forehead is pretty, it's a larger space of light compared to the chin. So that's pretty much count, accounted for the fact that the forehead gets the most. As for contrast-wise, I've minimized contrast completely. I'm not using pure whites at all. Um, ogres don't have to be mean. Wana from Maui from when I was an ogre, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He had an ogre face. I'm not saying he has to be mean. I'm saying he ha he, he just it's the me it's the measurement. It's a tool of measurement. When we invert the elf, we get the ogre. When the elf is female and ogre is male by standard, just so we can have two extremes, two ends of the spectrum, so we can identify. We've built our own, however small, measuring system, so we could wrap our head around the beauty standards, universal or not. Um, if I do a 28-day challenge, could I get Portrait Studio for free? Um, probably not. Uh, smudge still changed my life. Used to use the mixer, but not, but being introduced to the smudge tool changed my life. That's really good, Jaman. I'm so happy. Um, do you think it's a good idea to paint over line art or start painting from, from the scratch? I'm trying to develop my art style to include both line art and painting, but can't figure out how. Um, your art style should not uh, include lines if you have more than three shades uh, to, to render. So once you have introduced a shadow and a highlight and a midtone, you're basically telling the line, yo buddy, I don't need you because now I have these three shades and some edge work and I can pretty much replace you with an edge. If you wanted to use your lines and continue to use your lines, you should use no more than two shades to shade. Um, you should not be using some crazy extensive contrast and detail and have the line. The line becomes obsolete. Absolutely use the line if you're developing a sketch. Sorry, one sec. Uh, just had to cough. If you're developing a sketch or you're drawing some preliminary gesture lines or basic brush strokes to help you identify where the face is, where other units of the design are, um, but as for preserving them, if you want to go for a thorough render, please get rid of your lines and replace them with the edge. Um, if you're depending on the line for a read, your edge work needs work. Um, and that's what I'm doing right here. That's everything I've covered today. Um, as for style, you know how you know how I feel about style, you guys. So there's that as well. You guys are no place to start thinking about style. You're in no position to ask yourself, hey, what's my final, you know, legacy? What legacy do I, it's like a baby saying, what's my legacy? You know, sometimes you see babies staring into space. <laughs> and it's to be so funny if you think that baby's thinking about his legacy. When I start, when I ask, see, quest students ask me questions about their style, it's like that exact moment. I just see adorable little baby asking, what, what should I leave behind a legacy? What will my legacy be? How will people remember me? <laughs> and then I just started chuckling because I'm just like, you should not be worried about that right now. Just worry about the basics, get through life, endure some teenage years, and then maybe around year 40, you can start thinking about your legacy and have some kids. Like right now, I'm starting to think about the legacy. <laughs> uh, I'm starting to think about, you know, what's my legacy? Right, so just don't rush that question. You really don't need it. Another reason why Smudge Tool is amazing is just around the eyebrows. I, I really exactly the same reason why I smudge traditionally, I'm smudging right now. I want the eyebrows to feel like they're melted into the skin, which they are, pore by pore. And, and these eyebrows are, <clears throat> like they have a, a halo of tinier eyebrows around them, eyebrow hairs, before we get to the tiny, tiny ones that are visible. And I usually just choose the color outside. I'll look at the rest of the questions in a second. Just got to finish this guy up. And that's basically rendering. If you've ever wondered what rendering means, it's everything that I did today. Edge work and shrinking the brush and introducing contrast and thinking about fine detail. And do you see how I'm only just now adding detail to the eyebrow? 
I'm not, I didn't even think about the eyebrows till later on. Even adding contrast to the eyebrows came way after the nose and, and the eyes and all this other business. I'm going to bring some more contrast around his eye, eye creases for the folds of his eyes. Water muscle relaxants make it very hard to speak. <laughs> I, just, I just feel like I don't have control over my mouth. You're crazy, man. Okay, so I just basically did a radial shading technique, the apply and erase. I'll try to answer that value sharing question in a second. Um, value sharing is a very big thing, and it's it's like using value sharing is you know, there's there's no way for me to take, do a shortcut explanation. I just have to do the the, the full-length explanation, but it's basically using the wrong values for different degrees of elevation or depression. You, you, you're you only two hills of the same, <laughs> two hills of the same elevation. You can use the right value. I mean, the, I just, <laughs> oh my God. That's it, I give up. I'm doing the full-length explanation. Thanks a lot, Alyssa. Thanks, Alyssa. All right, value sharing is this, okay? We've got this weird, uh, okay? This is just a landscape. Imagine this is a landscape. These cavities all have varying degrees, okay? This one and this one have the same degree. And if you're looking at this from front view, this is side view, this is a cross section, all right, like ant hill style um, or ant farm style. From the front view, you just see a bunch of holes. All right, let's pretend that these holes are these two dudes, this one and this one. You use the same value for these two because they are both of equal depression. These hills, let's pretend this one is really high. This is the only one that gets that super, super brightness. Nothing else gets that. If for some fucked up reason you bring in this, this highlight and use it down here, that's called value sharing. It's like using the word orange to describe a, a sledgehammer and a shoe, and you don't even use it for orange. Okay, that's called value sharing. Your vocabulary is thrown off, is thrown off and you begin to use the wrong values to describe a diverse um, uh, count of, of depressions and, and, and cavities and elevations. Value sharing is when we're bringing in this shadow and bringing it here. This is wrong. This is an elevation. The shadow does not belong over here. Imagine I call the values value words. You can't use the same word to describe different objects that are completely different and in no way are related to each other. Maybe if they were related to each other. Maybe if there was another minor eye socket down here or a third eye up here. Then you can borrow some of this value, but it's it has to be exactly the same object for it to have the exactly exactly the same level of darkness. Okay? Damn me and my perfectionism. Everything has to be explained perfectly it's at the cost of my patience. Okay, you see, that was pathetic. I was just trying to find different ways to explain it. I was being such a lazy little twat. Sorry. Oh, there's kids watching. Please don't say that word to your parents if you heard me say it here first. <laughs> Plus, you should not be on the internet. Go watch some Arthur kids still watch Arthur? Oh my god, these muscle relaxers are ki kicking in. <clears throat> um, you gotta use draw them all. The abandon the line after three shades. Does this rule apply to tattoo art? Because you have a lot of line art there and not only in a cartoony way. Tattoo art is very, very tricky. Um, there's just so many styles that you have of, of applying the, the ink and and just so many ways of getting a read. Uh, what I think the, the best tattoos I've seen are the ones that minimize the amount of shades. If you have more than like six shades and you're trying to do full on gradients, that just doesn't read well in a tattoo. And there's also the fact that how good the tattoo artist is to begin with as an artist and technical wise, if they're applying the paint properly, if they're using a stippling technique to get the shades to go darker, or if they're actually trying to fill in areas with a darker piece of ink, uh, amount of ink, sorry. 
So if they're stippling in the ink, then they can create some beautiful gradients that have diverse amount of shades. So it really just depends on their on their technique. Tattoo, I can't really talk about it because I, I'm not a tattoo artist, so I don't have any recommendations or alternative ways to apply the ink. It's just um, some of the rules of, of art are universal, some are not, meaning like how they can be applied. But uh, pretty much try to minimize how many shades you're using, even if you're drawing like we're using here. We're minimizing how many shades we're using. Basically saying we have more mid-tones than we do excessive contrast. More mid-tone than excessive um, amounts of shadow or, or, or something like that. Okay. So this, I've added some rendering. I'm just going to, using a soft brush really fucked up. I'm just going to get rid of that soft brush edge. before, after. It was really, really blurry before. The face is also different from what I interpreted it as. Um, it's hard to tell if this started off as a photo and you drew over it. Kind of feels like you did. Um, but the detail that I brought in is pretty much where you should be going. I don't have time to bring in wrinkles on the eyelids. Uh, I would shrink the eyes definitely. I would bring in some pores around the nose. Um, I would probably work on some more of the facial hair and dark in certain areas, but this is as much as I can do right now. And this is the rendering. This is what rendering looks like. Uh, I'm not sure if these were cast shadows or if they were eye bags. It's really hard to tell. If they were eye bags, they need to be light all around. So they can read as eye bags. Like that. Kind of looks like someone I know. Okay. So any questions regarding edge work and stuff? Um, is there an agreed upon metric to judge artists? Is there a transi transitive property to artists? How do you gauge if, say, a da Vinci is better than a Michelangelo? and the other way around. Um, I don't know, I guess intelligence wise, uh, I don't know, I, I think hands down, Da Vinci was the smarter man, um, the more analytical man, um, but Michelangelo, because of his patience, achieved greater, greater things, I guess, um, than Michelangelo did, I mean, than Da Vinci did. This is just a small little comparison, so it's not that he, I don't know how to describe it really. It's it's a they're d smart in different ways. So no, I don't think there is a way to judge them. But in my opinion, because of the sciences that he pursued, because he actually uh, like uh, tried to find different ways to apply his skills or in his analytical way of thinking and the questions and the imagination and asking, a, you know, thinking about flight and drawing some of the most preliminary um, models for aircraft that we've seen in history. I mean, he's, he's pretty much a very progressive man, a modern thinker for his time. Whereas Michelangelo, though very, very gifted, I guess I wouldn't say that he tried to find a way to, to fly and actually thought about it technically, thought to bring together mechanics and have prototypes of different planes that he was trying. Like, I don't know. I, I really don't know. In my opinion, Michael and, um, Da Vinci is the smarter man, but I, I'm not that educated in their lives and whether or not Michelangelo had pursued other ways um, in his art. His sculpting was unbelievable, and that's why I'm saying he was capable of achieving some really amazing stuff in his lifetime. Um, so I don't know. His, his patience is like Olympic level. He looks Russian. Yeah, he does. He does. He looks like a Vitaly, yeah. <clears throat> a good way to explain style is smart in different ways. A good way to explain style. Um, professional style, yeah, and it's not smart in different ways. No, no, no. It's making different choices or breaking the rules in different ways. You gotta be specific. Uh, the gods and the details. Um, you you 
you can't say that style is I'm just this is just me this is just my intelligence in a different way if I okay that then I'm okaying every student that comes in and tells me their style is is something that they don't want to change no your style is a bunch of bad habits don't confuse style with bad habit that's my forever term and, and opinion on the matter um, but if you're looking at professional styles let's say we're comparing Sid Mead to that one guy that drew the original aliens um, and design them uh, yes they are they are very very varied and professional styles very researched very extensive very consistent styles and they've broken some rules deliberately the style of a of a Alfonso Mucha or a or a Salvador Dali those are very specific choices they made none of them are accidental none of them are because they think differently um, or because they see the world in a different way They've made these choices specifically. They can paint realistically as amazing, amazing sketches. They can, they can, they can draw some realistic stuff. They really understand light and shadow and what shadows do and what form is. Um, and they've made some of these choices very, very specifically for their styles and their deviations. Picasso didn't just draw weird stuff. He made his style out of, uh, because of his general boredom, with realism because of a shift he had to endure a lifetime of listening to what other people told him what was good art until he decided to you know you know what I'm gonna break this rule this rule this rule I'm not gonna break these color rules and I'm not gonna break this shading rule and I'm gonna keep some of these form rules when I need to if I want to make a nose look a little bit more three-dimensional um, but I'm pretty much throwing away all the other rules I've learned and he can paint a realistic face like you've never seen so it's it takes time to develop a style. Don't use that smart in different ways excuse. <clears throat> um, okay, so thank you, Jeremy. Thank you so much, Jeremy. So for our next challenge, um, I'm going to just open up a little note, my beautiful notes, and I'm going to just take some suggestions. So last time we looked at floral humanoids and won the poll. What do you guys want to see in the poll for uh, the next challenge? So it's not the next challenge, we're not deciding the next challenge right now, we're deciding on the poll, what we're going to vote on, different suggestions for different themes. So um, I'm just going to close this for you. I would bring in more contrast around the lips, and I just wish I had more time. But save, cancel, button, yes. I'm sorry if I didn't get to look at some of your... Um, uh, challenges for the for the for the floral humanoids. I'm sorry I didn't get to everyone. I'm only one person. I wish I had all the time in the world, but I don't. And these um uh, weekly meets are already like a real stress on my time. So I, I wish I had more. I mean I do extend it to two hours when we have those big theme days uh, critiques and showcases. Um, but there's only so much I can do when my voice goes out and I start to sound like I'm going through puberty all over again. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I wish I could get to everyone, but I can't. <clears throat> okay, insect people. That's really cool. Character design. Can we do a challenge where we create our own version of characters based off the Brothers Grimm fairy tales or combining living and non-living things? Um, like a table man or something like that? That's a good idea. Please, if you want me to look at your suggestion, write my name or I'll say... I can't see. Side views. Um, remember that lesson themes are not like the design themes. This is a design theme, so it can be something fun that you finish and fully render. Uh, lesson themes, like the one that's coming up, will be lips. I'll just announce that and just do that. I don't need you guys to post like hundreds of different ideas or something like that. I I'll let you know when the next lesson is. So side views is definitely a, 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 a something we'll spend time on. Western, um, nose landscapes, <laughs> insect people, bee people, uh, robot companion. Ooh, that's a nice one. So like a robot pet. That's really cool. So you can design animal and then interpret it as a robot and do some mechanical design and think about hydraulics and joints and, and wires and stuff. That's really cool. I probably want this one to win. Cyber humans, Nordic gods. Interesting. I'll take a little bit too much research on my part. Uh, forgotten fairy tale characters. Um, how do we know which one they are if they're forgotten? Um, basic landscapes in grayscale. <laughs> um, mystic beings of the forest. Hmm. We've already done a floral humanoid, so that's really similar to that. 
Nose landscapes would be fun. How about circus horror? These are all uh, character designs. So let's try to think like landscape or think like creature um, or, or something like that. Try to focus outside of character design as well for the, for, um, for the topic. Do, do mechanical Godzilla versus normal Godzilla versus Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, reinterpretation of mythological figures. Seconded robot pets. Mermaids and mermen. So fish people, Jasper, I guess. There are some in the Discord chat. I'll take a look at them in a second. Chimeras, we looked at that already. Invisible friends. <laughs> Snowy landscape. I like the sound of that. The colors might be a little... So I can give you guys different like land styles. Abandoned robots. What about express expressing emotional complexity? <laughs> yes, there is a Discord, by the way. Can someone link it? Does it, do, do you guys know how to link it? I, I don't know. Napkin people. Prehistoric swelling shelter. Oh, I like that. That's nice. That's very character designy. Um, not napkin people. <laughs> okay. Um, animal planets. Shaman. Magma themed environment. So we can add that to the, oh my lord, there's so many suggestions. Magma themed environment. So different environments. Um, okay. Architecture, virus people, aquatic creatures. Maybe not. Underwater landscapes. Ghosts. I meant dwelling. <laughs> Swelling. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I thought it was referring to some kind of like the name of a kind of a hut, a swelling. I don't know. It seems like it's a name for kind of a hut. Alien beaches, Greek gods as house pets or wild animals. I like that. I like combining two major different um, schools of like mythology into one. Rudolph, that is a mass thief. Maybe Bob Bros challenge. Elemental theme landscapes would be cool. Okay. So elemental themed landscapes that might be a suggestion cityscapes but in the future when someone becomes a dictator and it's terribly bad uh canyons with golems coachella what's coachella um i like crystal's idea seven deadly sin humanoids hmm something with the new planets we found yeah that's nice greek gods as house pets or wild animals how about planet design Homeless beggars who used to be big shots. Mutations. Uh, mutation sounds like a really cool idea, either for character design or creature. Okay. Kaiju. I don't know what that is. Spaceship design. Floating island landscape. Um, I might add that to... What's a kaiju? Am I asking like a really gross term for something? Fucking Japanese people. I'm joking. <laughs> They came up with a term for every kind of perversion, and I'm, people are telling them to me, and I'm saying them in my streams, like, Futanari? Is that is that one that I... Oh, my God. Disney princess is reimagined as Donald Trump cabinet member. <laughs> Cyberpunk cops going corrupt. Weapons. Uh, weapons is really cool. We haven't done anything on weapons. Okay, so trying different weapons. Monster marketplace. Um, there is, uh, there, there was that monster, what was it again? Monster something. I'll have to look up the, uh, weapons design. Ghostly apparitions? Mm. Ghostly apparitions and then what? Like, you have to combine them. You have to make it a challenge. I'm not just going to draw a ghost. What's the challenge? What's the design? Remember, the challenge for the last one was finding a way to, to seam together the anatomy of a human and a humanoid silhouette of a human with that of a, of a flower or a, or a floral anything. Body horror. Weapon people. Um, <laughs> do Satan rising out of the ground and grabbing a pack of Doritos before making his way to Russia to visit Chernobyl. <laughs> oh my god. Character design. 
uh, can we do tech concepts like a new phone or MP3 player? Um, industrial design, really? <laughs> I don't know. Ghosts of a sh sunken ship. There we go. But then what, Alyssa? And then what? They're of a sunken ship and they are the Greek gods. They are the, and then what? Abnormal physical, physical disorders. <laughs> Ghost animals. Drawing tools that don't want to die, but almost over. World War One veteran ghosts. Ghost fruit. <laughs> um, evolution of a creature. Possessed plushies. Hey, ghosts of a sunken ship, and the ghosts are robots? Robot ghosts of a sunken ship? Hey... That's going to make it weird. It's like, if they're robots, then why are they ghosts? That's really nice. Ghosts of a sunken sunken Viking ship. Oh, that's nice. You can draw them all like zombie-like, you know? Vikings with zombie faces. Ancient civilizations modernized. Ghost towns. Maybe someone can draw me a friend. <laughs> draw Jeffrey a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Steampunk Afghan carpets. <laughs> okay, don't just throw random words at me. <laughs> um, ghost napkin, uncanny valley. Next level shit happening here. Um, so we can make weapons like that, I guess. Androids, Viking beds, cutaway alien, ghost ch <laughs> kitchen appliance. <laughs> That's it. You guys are having too much fun. <laughs> yeah, you guys are getting punky. Okay, so let me close up shop. Where is it? Okay, so I I don't know where it is. All right, that's fine. I'll just open it up again. Um, abandoned robots in a broken down factory. Nice, and they had different tasks. That's nice. Robots are cool. Nice different tasks so you're gonna have to deal a lot with like um showing what their task was and by designing them differently we're showing their tasks that sounds really cool what else ghost american napkin people know more <laughs> video games environment character design oh uh, that's too general isis um android villains Ooh, ooh, i like this like star wars style Alien ruins, superhero monkeys. Uh, I like superhero monkeys. That's really cool. Modern ghosts, ghosts of people who died a few years ago, not like 100 years ago. Modern ghosts, okay. Creature of an imaginary friend. So magical companion is still going to be applied. We're still going to be looking at a lot of what we had before. So uh, that's still gonna be like part of. Remember the ones that lost la that la that lost last poll are gonna be part of this poll. Uh, digital pirates. So robot pirates, robot ghosts. I like that. But you meant but you said digital pirates. I don't know what that means. We can make vampires cool again. Mm, robot vampire. <laughs> Okay, um, weapons modeled by ancient mythology items. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, evil rodents who want justice for their kind. So, uh, so, so, villain rodents, rodent villain. I like that. Kind of like Redwall style. I very much like that. Um, bioengineered humans who live on other planets. Eh, sounds a little boring. We're just going to be drawing some more humans. What's so interesting about us, anyway? Draw Jeff a friend challenge will be tough. I have a lot of high standards when it comes to friends. That's probably the one. <laughs> Poor Jeff. <laughs> um... 
Failed experiments of scientists. Ooh, so yeah, we're drawing humanoids and creatures, but they're failed. I like that. I like that. <laughs> robot companion. Did I put robot companion? I really like robot companion. Like um that one guy from um fuck, what's his name? I love him so much. I wanted a little statue of him, but it's so fucking expensive. Uh what's his name? The guy from Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2 robot. He had a pizza party no one came to. Poor dude. Him. What's his name? Claptrap. Poor guy. He got a bunch of pizzas and no one gave a shit about him. I almost cried when I played that part. Poor Claptrap. Cat Warriors. Ooh, I like that. Okay. See, this is where we, this is what I like. Okay. Do Robot Mexicans Conquering the, okay, no more of that. <laughs> Broken Down Circus Robots. Um, broken down robot circus that had tasks. Okay. All right. I think that's enough for today. I think that's enough. I'm going to look through these, find the best ones. Some of these can get, can be combined into one topic to vote on. So a lot of these can be one, one, uh, one poll idea. Thank you everyone for joining today. I'm sorry about my absence on Tuesday. I'll try my best to, 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 to stay more consistent with these sessions. I did miss you guys very, very much. Um, and I hadn't streamed in so long as well. I missed the, all, the, all, the, all of the regulars and the streams. And um, if you if you like today's class, you can just go to YouTube to subscribe. Um, if you wanted to join the community and vote on these topics, just go to istabrek.com. And click on the little Google Plus icon and join the community. Please remember to read the rules before joining. Please remember also that if your work hasn't been moderated, if, it hasn't, if it's not visible, you, you upload it and it's not visible, it's because it's currently being moderated. Just give it a moment and it'll be visible. I might cap the group at 5,000 members. Um, it's turning into, I don't know how, I need to figure out a way to just um, remove inactive users. Or, or just maybe it is 5,000 active people. I think the wall would be madness. But <clears throat> I am thinking about capping something and um, so that we don't have too much of a flood of content. If you want critiques, you got to provide critiques. Uh, you got to make sure that you provide some, okay? If, they're, if you're not getting any, it's because you are not participating and you're not active. Um, uh, also... Uh, Portrait Studio was just had an update sent out. We fixed some of the lighting issues in Portrait Studio. Um, and uh, and uh, for those who own a copy already, have a look at that if you can. And update your your uh, your program. We missed you, Mr. Brock, so appreciate it. Thank you, Rosalinda. You guys are very, very sweet. Thank you, Jeremy, for, for modding today. I don't know where this, would, this chat would be without you, buddy. Thank you so much. Um, okay, that's it for today, guys. Have a great day, everyone. I will see you guys on Tuesday. Possibly see you guys sooner than that if we're having, having one of the nightly streams. I usually just sketch a face or do some sketching or studies, and I play The Hobbit or another audiobook um, uh, while we sketch together. Um, so that, that might happen tonight if I feel up for it, if I feel a little better. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.